We are excited to have presenting today, Dr. Clubson Gomes Gonsalves. Dr. Gonsalves is a diversified agriculture advisor in Lake and Mendocino counties. He has extensive knowledge of horticulture, turf grass, and weed management in a variety of environments. His current research focuses on horticulture crops, commercial fruit and nut crops, managing weeds using traditional and organic strategies, pesticide application technology, and drone use. We are honored to have you join us uh, today, Dr. Gonzalez. You may now share your slides and begin. All right. Everybody can see my screen? Yep, looks good. All right. First of all, thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to give you this talk. It's it's a great pleasure to, to be here and talk a little bit about the spring weed time management. So uh, I want to start with question that uh, probably you guys have seen. What is a weed? What uh, uh, a weed is defined as? So many different specialists from different area, they have different terminology. But uh, in general, we speak for us, I think it uh, can be well described as a plant out of place. And one of the weeds that I like always to, to put, uh, it's very well described as a weed when it's out of place is Bermuda grass. Because uh, when it's when in, in place, Bermuda grass is one of the most desirable turf grass uh, across the board in golf course industry, uh, sport field, um, residential lawn, road size, uh, um, industrial vegetation, but when Bermuda grass is out of place, can be a very, very difficult weed to management. It's, it's extremely difficult to control because Bermuda, it's so adaptable for a very wide range of environment that it's very difficult to control. And beyond that, Bermuda can reproduce by rhizome, stolon, and by seeds. And why it's so important to control weeds? Um, basically, uh, generally speaking, in our crop system, uh, uh, weeds, we, we're going to compete uh, with your crop or your desirable plant. But on the landscape standpoint, I believe the aesthetic is the main point because uh, on your guard, um, on the landscape area, uh, Everything is about the beautification. It's about the pleasure that you have in your garden and, and you have around your house. Uh, that's why I think the, the aesthetic is one of the key points uh, when we want to kill weeds. And one great example is, again, Bermuda grass. Bermuda it's, is a such a very difficult weed uh, to control in all the turf grass system. For example, if you have a Bermuda grass infestation in a cool season turf grass, for example, tall fescue, uh, uh, rye grass, uh, Kentucky bluegrass, and any other kind of cool season grass, Bermuda can be a very unpleasant weed, primarily on the fall, winter, and early spring because Bermuda will be dormant, just like on this picture here, you can see. And because all the other turf uh, will be green, in this case, we have tall fescue and rye grass on this field. Uh, this is a sport field. And we have this big patch of Bermuda grass dormant uh, right now. And people sometimes misunderstand as a disease. And they call us and say, hey, I have my, my turf is dying. Uh, that maybe some disease, something, can you take a look? But in a lot of situations, when they send a picture, when we go out in the field, it's just contamination of some warm season grass like Bermuda. So uh, weeds can, can hold trashy. This is very common on the edge of the roads and on the cities as well. Um, Weeds can, can break down pavement. And again, you see here Bermuda grass, so aggressive uh, when established here on, on the soil. If you don't have a very strong base on the pavement, Bermuda get, grass can make through and, and, and break through the, the, the pavement. And that is all the weeds as well that uh, have this strong ability to 
to to break through the pavement and, and, and grow up. So can hide visibility, and this can be a safe issues in, in the edge of the road. That's why it's important to keep the, the edge of the road mowed frequently, because can hold like signs and, and so on. And this can be a, a, a safe situation for the drivers. Can impact humor, because a lot of weeds flower can attract insects, and that can be a, a danger for the uh, human health or in other situations, poison weeds uh, also can be a hazard and it's important to avoid getting in, in contact with some kind of poison weeds. Fire, I think fire, it's a, a big deal in California, one of the big deal in California on the summit. And, and if you have this high vegetation, and uh, primarily those weeds on the summertime, on the hot time of the year where Fire is a, a problem. Uh, the primary of those weeds actually uh, winter weeds that uh, already complete the cycle. Right now they are still in the vegetative stage, and but as soon the temperature start raising up, those weeds will grow very crazy and produce seeds and complete the life cycle, and they're gonna die on the field. And if you have all this biomass, it can be a very uh, problematic fire hazard and if you have this kind of situation if you not keep clean surround your ha your house definitely call fire they will notify you and also different kind of weed they can be shelter for uh pests like roads like rats such like voles uh gulfs and so on also can be like a host for disease and insects and in other situations, weeds can be a problem on the railways, industrial vegetation, um, road size, and, and so on. I'll just like touch base very quickly in some weeds that my you guys have in, in your backyard, on your garden, that it's very common weeds in California. And, and but uh, definitely the range of weeds is way more big. It's it's really hard to cover all the weeds that uh, is gonna germinate, is gonna grow up on that time of the year. But one of the very common weed is common chicken weed. Um, it's a very small stature weed that they start to grow very crazy right now. But uh, normally the germination start on the late fall, uh, and they stay like uh, on the uh, vegetative stage uh, through the winter. And when you start to move up from early spring to summer, they start to grow and try produce seed to complete the cycle. And this picture is very interesting on the top because this is like a chickweed grow in full sun. And the leaves normally it's very small, but uh, can be very tricky to identify when it's grow under shade condition because the the leaf it's a little wide, it's kind of little tricky to try identify. But uh, as soon that that species produce seed, it's very easy to identify by the flowers. Same for moss chickweed. It's there is some difference from common chickweed, primarily because moss chickweed have hairs. And you're gonna see all these hairs on the leaf and common chickweed that is no hair, it's hairless. But the flower, it's kind of similar. And again, after those species start to produce flower, it's way easy to identify in your garden. Species that is very common as well is, is speed wheel, for example, common field speed wheel and slant speed wheel. Again, there is some ways to, some keys to identify those two species, the primary is like on the leaf shape because the flower is kind of similar when we have a, a common speed wheel and, and slant speed wheel. Uh, clover in general, white clover and California bun clover. Also, it's very common that time of the year. Uh, you can see like the leaf shape is kind of a little bit similar, but here we have white clover with the white flower and California burnt clover, it's a little more small stature and have yellow flowers. And again, like flower, it's a one of the great way to identify. And a lot of sweet species, it's really hard to identify before uh, they actually start like, before the, the flowers pop up or the seed head in, in, in grass. 
uh, speeds. Uh, Chapper purse, uh, also it's very common in the spring. It's very easy to identify by the, the seed format. It looks like a, a purse, um, but uh, it's very common that time of the year. Uh, Thistles, that is different kind, but uh, I think the most common is milk thistle and Italia thistle. Uh, they are very common on pasture, uh, landscape area, like fallow side, like road size. Uh, it's very common to see. And to try like remove manual, it's just not very unpleasure. Pleasure because they have all these spins on the leaves and kind of make a little hard to make manual weed control. Other species like the dead narrow and grown ivy for both like herb dead narrow and purple dead narrow, they also common weeds that time of the year. And that is a way to identify, uh, for example, purple dead narrow, you're gonna see this purple color on the top. Uh, the other one, sometimes it's a little tricky to identify, uh, but uh, that is some key, specific keys, uh, uh, on the leaves uh, and the shape of the plant that uh, make it easy to identify. But again, it's piece like sometimes when they are on the same family, they have like similar management strategy to, to, to control. So ground, uh, common ground cell also, it's a small stature weed that uh, it's very common on the Aceris family and uh, have this yellow flower. Red steam or broad leaf uh, filler. Uh, those two have similar flower that some specific characters on the leaf that uh, make easy to identify on the leaf shape, but uh, it's extremely common weeds on, on garden that time of the year. They can be very dense, very difficult to control because if you have a very strong seed bank, they grow just crazy that time of the year and, and pulling this manual, it's just not very easy to do. Oh, on, on the Brahma families, uh, there is many species. I put a hit, uh, shit grass because it's one of the most common. That time of the year, it's kind of hard to identif identify because they still don't have seed hair. But as we move forward for mid summer or for mid spring and, and, and late spring, they start like show the seed head and become more easy to identify. But it's still there is some key. It's a little hard when you look like on the uh, ligule and some hairs characteristic and some veins like this red vein. It's some key uh, ways to identify uh, sheet grass. But uh, again, the, the seed, it's much more easy because the needle on the seeds uh, depend on the size. Sometimes it's much more easy to identify on the uh, late on the season. Kikuya grass, Kikuya grass is much more common on, on the South of California when you move more South, for example, on Los Angeles area or San Diego. It's not very common on the North Coast, but uh, you still can see in some places, but that definitely is more problematic when you move more south. And it is a very problematic uh, weeds in, in turf grass system. Poa annual, uh, I like to talk about poa annual because it has been one of the weeds that have been working for more than five years and I can tell you poa annual, even it's a very small statue weed, it's a very small one, um, but uh, it's one of the most difficult weed to control in turf grass system. And the reason is uh, because this weed have the ability to, to become resistant very quickly to different herbicide motivation. And we have some example of uh, poa annual biotype that is resistant to three or four, even five different herbicide motivation. Basically, if you start, if you work with herbicide, like after a couple of years, use the same motivation, this we just start show resistant population. And the other weed that I point to here is poa bulbosa. Uh, basically, uh, it's a kind of new weed for me. Uh, I start like study a little more about this weed when I moved to California uh, less than two years ago. And when I saw for the first time without the seed head, I was mad with poa annual. But uh, as soon as the, the seed head pop up, 
I start to realize, oh, I'm dealing with something different. And I start studying and say, oh, this is Poebo Boza. It was something very new for me that I never have seen before. And after you see in the field, that thing start to be very common. And I see like Poebo Boza everywhere where I go in, on the East Coast. It's, it's very present in, in, on the North Coast of California. And the problem is if you deal like, if you want to control POA annual using pre-emergent herbicide uh, and you have POA bulboza in the area, POA bulboza is going to germinate from, from the bulbs and the herbicide just have no effect at all on, on the bulb. And on this example, this is one of the trial I have here in Lake County, try control POA annual use pre-emergent herbicide. And you can see on the untreatment plot, you see like COVID with poa annual and also poa bulboza in the area. But on the plot where we treat with pre-emergent herbicide, we have only poa bulboza. And the poa annual control was very good. So that means if you control uh, poa annual with pre-emergent and you have poa bulboza in the site, definitely you have to use a different strategy to, to kill poa bulboza. Again, I'll not talk more about weed ID, but if you wanna, if you have some weeds on, on your site, on your guard that you try to identify, that is, we have different tools that can help you. And one, the great one is the weed ID tool. If you go on the Weed Research and Information Center, you're gonna find this uh, web page and you're gonna see the weed ID tool. If you enter with some key, information of your weeds, you're gonna be able to identify. Also, we have other resource of information. For example, we have several books for, for example, the Weeds of California, Weeds of the Northeast, and that can help you to find the weeds that you are looking for. Uh, if you need help, you definitely can call, uh, contact the Master Garden Program. They are wonderful to help you identify weeds and any other question you have in your garden, uh, on your trees, on your plants. They can help you uh, design which species, like tree or like desirable trees or turf that's more desirable for your location. And also you can contact your local farm advisor if you have further question. They definitely can help you um, with in many different situations and definitely uh, identify weeds is, is one of the skill that they can help you. And for example, in my case, if you are in Lake or Mendocino County, I'll be more than help, happy to help you uh, in any question you have on the area. And even outside of the lake in Mendel, uh, if you email me, I'll be more than happy to, to assist in you. So let's move on for the principle of the IPM weed control. Uh, on the weed management world, we call more, uh, instead of to be like integrate pest management, we call like integrate weed manager is uh, IWM. But uh, to have a full uh, integrate pest manager strategy uh, and use all the tools that is available, you should use like strategy like prevent weed to come for your site, use mechanical option, cultural, chemical, and even biological in some specific situation that I'll touch base uh, very quickly on, on late in this presentation. Let's start with the prevent. So I think this is the best strategy is avoid weeds to go on your side. And there is many ways to do. And one of the best way uh, use like certified soil or compost that you know it's weed free. There is no seeds like weed seeds or any kind of vegetative propags of, of weeds. Um, one of the great example and that is other weed species as well is the Eclipta. Eclipta normally grow uh, around the pots on the nursery. And sometimes they can actually attach to the pots and go into the, the pot row on the base and under and maybe on, from the top as well. And when you buy this kind of the plants, 
it's important like any kind of plant you inspect to see if there is no uh, any weed propago um, on the pots or surrounds or under the pot because if they go into they will be there and when you move and plant in your site they will gonna germinate and, and you gonna get in a problem that you're gonna have uh, a new weeds that maybe was not in your site that you have to deal with. Again, the soil source, like if you are buying compost or any other so top soil, it's good to know uh, from where they come from, if they was sterilized and if there is no seeds, uh, weed seeds or any kind of propago. In this case here, it's more sad. It's like a, a small bulbs uh, uh, on the soil and Sometimes they are very invisible, like seeds is invisible. You're not going to see. And sometimes you bring like a topsoil or a compost that uh, have seed. It's it's very important to be careful. And I always like to say that it's better you to spend a little more money up from when you buy your topsoil or your compost uh, to make sure you buy a good quality product uh, that is weed free then they spend more money late to to try do like post control so clean more between lawns uh, after each use and this is very important for the landscape company because they are uh, working in, in several property and sometime in the same day, they move from one place to other. And anytime when they fin finish one work, it is important they clean out the equipment before they move from one side to another to avoid carry uh, seeds and even like part of the plant that can actually uh, grow up from the vegetative uh, uh, propago. Never let the, the weeds go to seed and we always talking about that never try never let the the weeds produce seed sometimes it's extremely hard and uh, i understand that as a scientist because uh, a lot of species for example bermuda grass uh, uh dandelion uh poa annual they have the ability to produce a new seed here head very, very quickly. For example, if you do like a, in your lawn, you do like a, a mower every other week. Normally, like if you like wait like 15 days between one mower and other, it's enough time for this, this species uh, produce a new seed head and complete the cycle and the seed will be available on the field. But uh, when you have this kind of situation with with weeds that have ability to, to produce seed very quickly, it's better you do more frequently, like instead of to do more every other week, do once a week or even more to prevent uh, uh, those species produce seed. But beyond that, like seeds can be spread by air, by water, by uh, birds and animals and humor. And yeah, they can move a long distance. So uh, very quickly about biological control, it is an option that can be used. It's it's just very hard to implement on the turf grass system or ornamental, but uh, definitely there is some option available for specific situation. For example, one great example is yellow star teasel biological control use some insects that uh, uh, they basically destroy the seed head and the plant is still going to be in the field, but they will not produce seed. Um, it's a very interesting way, but it's kind of not very applicable for a landscape situation. And that is other option like use a sheep, a duck, a chicken, and even caterpillar. But again, it's very specific situation and it's very hard to implement in um ornamental or for landscape situation. So cultural strategy uh, basically uh, can be defined as anything done to culture or to promote the growth of the crop or your desirable um, plant. A few example is add compost, core aeration, uh, 
uh, limit the area of weed grower, borite selection, mowing, add fertilizer, irrigation, pruning, and so on. That is many other ways to, to do that can be qualified as a cultural uh, strategy. Just a little bit about coloration. So coloration is very important to, to for soil compactation, you're gonna decompact the soil. And what this do, you're gonna have like a, a better water infiltration, a better like availability of the nutrient, um, uh, more oxygen uh, under the ground. And basically what you do, you're gonna decompact the soil and you're gonna promote the, the plant health by uh, increasing the, the growth of the plant in both above and, and below the ground. You're gonna promote the roots system and a better health of the, the turf grass canopy. So use dense uh, plant. And this is a, a very good way to suppress weed on your garden. If you have like a very, the, the plant you select, it have a can provide a very dense canopy. And when you cover the entire ground, uh, it is important not to leave the ground exposed because if you have light to go in to the soil and you have moisture, adequate moisture, definitely weeds is gonna come in up. And that's why important in your garden, you have like a very dense canopy. And this is one of the greatest strategy to, to suppress weed because without light go under the canopy, uh, just a few weed species are able actually to, to, to break through of the ornamental canopy here to break through to that high dense uh, canopy. And when a few species that are able to do uh, probably it's much more easy to control manually. So variety selection, it's very important for your specific situation. You select the species that is more adapt for your site. And for example, this is a great example. Uh, on this site here, on this shroud, we have fine fescue. And you can see it's very clean um, from weeds. And we have blue grammar on the right side where we can see it's less compatible and, and the canopy is not very dense. And you see like a lot of weed germinated and grow on, on the blue grammar side. And this example, I think it's it's some kind of tissue. And one of the reasons like for example, fine fescue, it's a great species for several area is because Fine fescue don't need a very high input in terms of water, uh, fertilizer, and maintenance, general maintenance. Um, and also fine fescue can, can provide this very dense canopy. And there is no require a lot of mower through the year, normally like in natural area, uh, like more like adjacent vegetation, uh, fallow sites, you have to do like one, maybe two mowers through the year. And also there is some study that show some allelopath effect to suppress weeds uh, when you have like fine fescue. Mower, I think mower is the most frequent input on turf grass and often is one of the big problem people have. They are always struggling uh, to how mower appropriate based on the turf grass species. And in a lot of situations, when you have a unlevel ground, um, you can have, you can fall in a situation where you have very high turf in one part of your turf and in the other part you have scalpy because you have these little hills on, on your area. And when you pass your mower, you just like cut the entire turf and expose the, the soil. And in this kind of situation, it's really hard for the turf grass to recover and cover the ground again. And it's an open space for weed germinate and, and, and growth. And all the problem is when you have a dull blade and it's very important you, you always have sharp blade on your mower because the dull blade blades also can cause a scalpy on your turf grass. This is a great example here. On the front, you have a very green turf and high mower, like 3.2, 3.25 inches. Um, 
normally will be much more uh you have gonna have a dense canopy and weeds will be much more hard to for the weeds break through. And across the street, we have a turf that was more like two inch and you can see a lot of scalp here and surround and definitely a turf like that, it's much more susceptible for uh, weeds infestation. This is one of one great study that I conduct when I was in my postdoc uh, back on the East Coast, where we was assess like the impact of the mower high on the weeds infestation, and we prove that uh, when you have like mower high, like three, in, like three inches or more, you can have a better canopy that can hold the weed back. And one of the reasons is the berry, because the high canopy, you're gonna prevent the weeds to, to, to coming up. And the other reason is because it's very few light go under the canopy. So, and a lot of weeds need light to germinate. And for this study, we use like a micro camera to take picture from under the canopy. And as you can see on, the, on this figure, see, you can see just a few light just go in, under the canopy. And this was one great study that we conduct uh, in my postdoc and just show uh, up like this was, this study was present on the North Coast with Science Society and day one cool, he's like a, a postdoc, a, a PhD student. And he won the first place as one of the best uh, study present at the conference. So fertilize, it's uh, another important things that have to be done on your turf. For example, you have to spray uniform application. Otherwise the fertilizer, they are not mobile and they will stay where you spray. If you spray very high rate in some spot, you actually can kill the turf. And in the other place, the, the turf is just gonna grow healthy on where you spray. If you miss gaps and leave in line behind, the turf is just not grow, it's not gonna grow well and weed infestation is just gonna start. And will be the weeds will be more aggressive to compete with your turf. So let's move on for mechanical uh, option to control weeds and basically you're gonna target weeds with physical uh, methods or basically it's no chemical approach to control weeds. And this can be like, you can kill weeds on pre and post emergent uh, situation in turf and ornamental areas. And basically uh, different method can be uh, qualified as a mechanical. For example, just the simple way to pull a weed by hand Lay out a fabric is like a, a, a physical berry. Uh, cut cut weeds, burn weeds, shade weeds. All those are mechanical strategy. And again, it's very important to mention that that's every weed can be controlled by hands. All it's take is time and, and and money. Basically, if you have a small landscape area, a small garden and you have the time to pull it by hand, uh, definitely it's recommend because for a lot of situations that bee can work as a therapy. I like to, to, to pull a weed by hand and use a, a hoe to, 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 to pull the weeds in my garden. And definitely that is, that is some pleasure in, in pulling weeds and kill the weeds. But there's other ways such mochi and you can use wood chip, pine straw, uh, stone material, and even leave if you, uh, if the money is a concern, you can use the leaves uh, just to, to, to cover the, the, the beds uh, that can provide a very uh, good mulch to, to hold the weed back. Definitely like pine straw can be a hazard, a fire hazard when it's very close to the ha house in, in, in California. It's not the best option to choose, but uh, stone and pine the, and wood chip is a great option for, for moats. And it is important to point that uh, it is always good you have a fabric under the moat to, to hold the weed back for a long period of time, because this fabric can, can hold the weed for several years. Instead, you have only the moat. 
So basically, like, put the fabric and the mulch in the top. Otherwise, over time, your weeds is going to start germinate from your mulch. They just like break through the mulch. Here we have like some example with uh, stone material here with just coming up. And this one, it's a uh, uh, milk thistle. This is in front of my house. And here, like uh, outside of the building here, we have some... Uh, some wood chip and you can see like weeds just recover uh, from the, the mulch and break through the mulch. And we don't also wanna uh, leave the, the mulch very skin where you can see the fabric. Definitely you wanna put a very thick mulch that can cover the fabric for more like for the aesthetic standpoint. Flamey, I've been working with flame a lot in my career to try kill weeds uh, in landscape. And it's a very cheap way to do. It's very effective in a lot of weeds, uh, primarily um, early stage weeds, um, or when you have a small stature weed like a speed wheel, chick weed, and some clothing early stage, and even like poa annual. But if you have a very aggressive weeds, uh, for example, horseweed, uh, uh, buckle plantain, uh, dandelion, broadleaf duck, those weeds are extremely aggressive and they can uh, germinate back, like regrow back very quickly after the flame exposure. And Bermuda grass, again, is one of the most aggressive weeds that can recover for flaming. If you flame Bermuda grass, a couple weeks late, you're going to see Bermuda coming back. If you have a Bermuda infestation, flame is not your best option for sure. Solarization uh, is a very interesting way to kill weeds. Um, that is some limitation for spring weed. And one of the reasons is because we still don't have high temperature and the solarization is based, based in temperature. You have to ha raise the temperature high to kill the weeds. Uh, but there is some ways we can use actually the solarization to kill some uh, early spring weeds. For example, uh, speed wheel, uh, chickweed, um, Poa annual clover, uh, that is some ways we can kill. And uh, one great example was in this study here, I conducted a couple of years ago, where I was like try kill weeds on early spring. And basically we have here a Bermuda grass site. It's a beautiful Bermuda grass site. And we put the the, the solarization, the plastic, the clean plastic to kill the winter and early spring weed. And what happened was, because on uh, early spring, we don't have high temperature, but we still can raise the temperature a little bit. Basically, like uh, that time we had like the soil temperature was around 70%, 70 Fahrenheit. And putting the fabric, the temperature just raised up for around uh, 95, 100 Fahrenheit. And what happened was, the temperature was enough to kill the spring weed, like poa. As you can see, we have poa here dying. And also we had a lot of speed wheel and chick weed. And all those weed was, we was able to kill the weed. And on the other hand, actually we favor Bermuda grass growing up. Because Bermuda grass, when we start, Bermuda grass was still kind of dormant to start growing up, greening up. And when we put actually the, the solarization, we promote Bermuda grass grow and actually was an amazing strategy to, to control uh, early season weeds and promote Bermuda grass grow. And Bermuda actually COVID and COVID the ground very, very quickly when we put, put the, 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 the plastic. But uh, we have to be very careful with this approach because uh, if you have like infestation of other in like annual uh, warm season uh, weeds, for example, in this example here, we have crabgrass. And what happened was we also promote in some sites uh, uh, crabgrass grow. And, and the same time we have Bermuda grass growing very fast, but we have like crabgrass grow very fast on the site. And it's important to know your seed bank. For example, for this situation, we had a very low seed bank and the turf just grow beautiful. But on this other side, uh, we had a lot of uh, crabgrass infestation. 
Again, if you want to know about more about solarization, we have a, a full publication on the IPN website. If you want to study more, you can download this uh, paper. is called like uh, Soil Solarization for Gardening and Landscapers, and you're going to find much more information. And I'm also doing some study here this year. Last year, I did some demo to try control uh, perennial weeds. In this case, we had... Um, um was uh pokeweed and, and, and this was blackberry and we saw a very good control this year i'm gonna move forward with other uh study to see how effective this is gonna be uh shading same for shade uh, we can achieve good control use shade the difference instead to use like the clean plastic we're gonna use the black plastic but uh, the principle is kind of similar, except because there is no light going into the, the, the plastic, but uh, can be a great option as well. So uh, let's move on uh, for chemical control. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on, on this topic, but uh, I think it's one very important compound on, on the weed management strategy. And many people like to use herbicide to kill weeds. And in many situations, it's the only way we have. But uh, it is important to mention that is all this other option that I mentioned before. And basically, we have synthetic herbicide. And one of the great example is glyphosate. And... On the other hand, we have no chemical or natural, or we can call organic herbicide. And one of the great examples is vinegar. But again, uh, I think the first thing you have to ask yourself that you really need to use herbicide, that is any one of the previous options that I mentioned before will help you to suppress in your weeds. And in many situations, I would say yes. Uh, I would like strategies like mechanical, cultural, and even like prevent those weeds to come for your site is a great strategy and sometimes can do the job. You're not gonna need a uh, herbicide. But uh, in some specific situation, if you need, I think you have to be careful and treat, even if you, you will work with synthetic herbicide or organic, you have to have the same caution uh, to use PPE, like the personal pro protective equipment, uh, to do because synthetic and organic herbicide, they are still pesticide and they can be dangerous for the human health. So the first step uh, to select the best product for your specific situation is identify the weed species uh, to be controlled in the life cycle if it is uh, annual species or is a perennial species, if it's a grass or a broadleaf weed, or if it's a sad, and that is different kind of weeds that uh, definitely it's very important you identify all these characteristics. What is the crop or the desirable plant that you have because you wanna kill your weeds, but uh, you don't wanna damage it in, in your desirable plant. And that's it, it is a very important component. So determine the soil characteristic, environment condition, and I'm marking red environment condition because on the early spring, middle spring, we still have a low temperature and a lot of herbicide for both organic and synthetic. A lot of herbicide, they, 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 they are very dependent on the environment condition and cold temperature. Sometimes a lot of those products will underperform on the cold temperature and it is very important to take care uh, of this, this this point because primarily like for the organic herbicide they are highly dependent on temperature and sunlight and if you do like in cold temperature and, and in a cloud day normally a lot of product they will not perform as they should be herbicide application equipment available the ratio of the weed control Application time, if you're going to deal with pre-emergent and post-emergent. Um, uniform of the application. Product selection rate. Uh, pre and post herbicide. 
uh, which one will be the best. And again, you have to know about the cycle of your weeds, if annual grass, uh, perennial grass, annual broadleaf, perennial broadleaf. Uh, if you have sad, like for example, green kalinga, uh, yellow nut sad, purple nut sad, and so on, all these uh, things that you have to keep in mind before you select your product. Again, there is many products available and I'll not take time on that, but uh, there is a lot of products that's available on the market for for the consumer and all the, we're gonna, you're gonna need a license to buy. For the organic product, uh, definitely vinegar. It's, uh, I got a lot of questions about vinegar, if they work, uh, uh, how to use, rates to use, when apply, uh, how many application is need to control the weeds and, First, on that point, it's still there's a lot of question, a lot of answer that we still don't know. We don't have an answer for a lot of this question. Uh, all that we already know, and that's I'm gonna touch base a little bit. But it is important to to mention that uh, you have to use like certified product that uh, has been passed through the regulation uh, that they are more safe for for use. Don't try like mixed product in your home and make your homemade herbicide because they are still pesticides and they can be dangerous. Organic uh, pre-emergent herbicide, the only example we have is corn glute meal. Uh, they can be effective to control some annual grass, for example, crabgrass, and they still are a source of fertilizer. So the corn glute meal is 90% of nitrogen. And that is many other for post-emergent herbicide, there is so many herbicide, organic herbicide available, and you can find they in different formulation, different combination, different concentration available on the market. And acetic gas uh, is one of the great examples is the vinegar, but we also can find like acetic gas, malic gas, uh, caprylic gas, fatty acid, pelagonic acid, clover oil, cinnamon oil, iron, and that is all the option available as well. But one thing that we know about uh, organic herbicide, they are contact herbicide, they will burn down back your weeds, but in a few days you have to do sequential application uh, because the weed is gonna recover back. Those herbicides have no residual active and basically they burn down the weeds. Uh, in this case, we have white clover, or oh, we have a uh, poanial chick weeds and corn speed wheel, and we can see they burn down. Uh, but example like a, a poanial, if you already have a mature plant, they are gonna recover back and you have to do sequential application. But uh, again, like for early stage weeds, they can be, they can do a very good job. For example, this example I have, a. Uh, Prostrate knockweed, this is one of my site I have here. But uh, if you have a species like Italian ryegrass, field binding weed, they're gonna recover very fast. And again, early stage, small statue weed, it's, uh, those herbicides are much more effective. You can spray it on the turf if you have a very bad infestation on your green turf, they will burn down. The turf eventually is gonna recover, but uh, that is the, they were gonna cause a lot of injury, it's just not desirable to spray on, on the green turf. But uh, one great option, if you have a, a warm season turf like Bermuda and Zoysia, could be an option to spray um, on the dormant turf because you're gonna control all the weeds on the site and you're not gonna cause damage on the turf. And when the turf is start green up on the spring, they will just like regrow without injury at all. And we still can have very acceptable control with organic herbicide. This example here, we have vinegar application, three times, three, 10 days interval on very early spring. And after the, the, the turf start germinate, they just like, they regrow green and very clean uh, uh, without weeds. But it's important to keep in mind, those herbicide can be expensive. The vinegar is one of the very expensive product, but uh, that is all the product, products in the market that is more compatible uh, in terms of cost with synthetic, that uh, it, it's more, much more affordable. Uh, I'm almost done. This is my, I have just two slides to go, but uh, I just want to touch base that some emerging technology like robotic technology that's uh, 
probably in the future be more available for for the landscape companies and for uh, uh, residential, for example, the electrical weeds for spot application or for big scale uh, broadcast application. Uh, Steam, it's kind of like, a, it's not a new idea, but uh, it's the new technology and they've been improved over the time that uh, have great applicability for landscape area as a no selective weed control. Um, that's, that is some prototype available and some commercial uh, machines are available. And the good thing is a considerable organic approach to control weeds. And take home message, uh, just a few uh, gold rulers, uh, basically 70% of the turf grass and ornamental weeds can be controlled by cultural practice. Um, Start with good soil, choose suitable plant, cultivar, and blender. Mower is a very important component of pruning your your, your plants. Water, fertilizer, uh, pest control uh, to ensure a uh, health grow of the turf or the ornamental plant canopy. Uh, mitigate antagonist facts such as shady, soil compactation, soil toxicity, poor draining, and that is many other factors that's uh, gonna help you to improve your, your landscape your, or your flower bed and, and so on. And I think I'm done and I would like to thank you all uh, for your time and I'm open for any question you might have. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that great information.